The new flagship with the best camera on the market. With a 5000mAh battery that you can charge to full in just 36 minutes, if a secondary display, 12 gigs of RAM or 50 megapixel main sensor sound like a crazy lot, there's even more, a lot more. Let's inspect! Welcome! Really nice to meet you. My name is Michael and if we see each other for the first time, maybe you can consider subscribing to the channel because very often we inspect cool tech here. And I guess this passion for examining gadgets has brought me here with you and the brilliant new Mi 11 Ultra. So yes, this video is going to be entirely devoted to the Mi 11 Ultra and this phenomenal flagship. I think it would be fair to call it the smartphone with the best spec camera and the best performance and the greatest hardware specifications of the year because I really doubt there's going to be a device topping this up. But we're here to find out whether this entire package of hardware and software is good enough to justify the label flagship of the year. Before we continue, quick disclaimer, uh, this device, you know, the Mi 11 Ultra has been sent to me by Xiaomi. They're not going to receive the chance seeing the video before it goes online and I'll make sure to highlight all the good, however also all the bad sides of the Mi 11 Ultra, not that there are too many weak points, but um, I managed to find some, so we're going to talk about all of that. Now, before I continue, because we usually discuss a lot about the hardware, I'm not going to be able to show you the true unboxing procedure, because by the time I received the unit, the retail box was not ready yet, but what I can confirm for sure is that it's going to include a charger. It's going to be a 67 watt charger. We'll talk about the battery and the charging in just a moment. Now, before diving into the hardware part, just to show you the wallpaper of this device, because it does have a very important role. Now, th this here is K1, one of the toughest peaks to climb. And Xiaomi have placed this here on purpose. And I think this fact alone shows enough of their commitment to make this smartphone the best flagship of 2021. Let's begin with the performance. What can we say? Now, the fastest CPU and GPU of 2021, with the Geeky 3 phase cooling technology that boosts thermal conductivity by 100%, 12 GB of DDR5 RAM. I'm, of course, being a little sarcastic here because you probably are sick of hearing about the coolest specs, but they're here and truly shine. If you wonder whether Facebook, Messenger, Twitter, and YouTube work well, of course they do. You will experience the best performance in the industry. That's not the point. The point is that heavy, intensive tasks like rendering a video or playing games, it will be a lot more efficient than most other phones, even if they are flagships. I think it's needless to say that Snapdragon, as architecture has a lot better performance as compared to Exynos, that Samsung is utilizing in most parts of Europe, and the cooling inside eliminates throttling. I was able to notice an improvement compared to the regular Mi 11, which I tested a few weeks ago, and is a very fast smartphone anyways. Mi 11 Ultra is also a great smartphone for Gaming, yes, you can see it has phenomenal grip and probably this huge camera bump helps a little bit. Now I, I can hold it like it's the first smartphone I can hold like that. It's kind of risky, don't do it at home or don't do it outside because if it drops on the ground, nobody knows what's going to happen. Well, options are two, but that's another story. So in terms of gaming, besides the good grip, there's phenomenal sound quality. And the display. I, I really believe that in the past maybe six, seven months, Xiaomi have released a few devices with some brilliant displays. And I've been praising the Mi 11 already about its perfectly tuned AMOLED screen. It's very similar 120 Hz panel with amazing colors, contrast, and sharpness. Also, speaking of fitting in the hand, usually your fingers will be supporting the back in a way that it won't touch the camera. With my older OnePlus 8 Pro, this was always dramatic because every day I had to wipe the camera lens. Small things, but when it comes to day-to-day -day usage, they make a big difference. The other thing which is great for me are the buttons positioning. I like them being on the same side because last year I have created like 96 screenshots without really wanting to. Now, I know why most of you are watching this. The camera. Or the many cameras. In the past years, the software processing has stepped up its game and often compensates hardware imperfections, 
but a large sensor and good optics will always give you better results. Inside this phone there's another component which is kind of revolutionary and it's the main image sensor. So uh, I decided to make this little piece of paper, it's not the actual sensor, it's, it's just a gimmick but you can guess about the size I'm just going to put it here on the white surface so this is this is actually how big the image sensor behind the main camera is and that's revolutionary a lot you know most of the camera sensors are usually half that big we talk about around 100 square millimeter of surface which is supposed to capture the light and in terms of size the sensor inside is almost as big as the sensor inside my secondary camera, the Sony ZV-1. So inside this phone, one of the cameras is almost as good and big as the Sony ZV-1 with a major difference, the processing by the MIUI app, which is insanely good. This is why without additional processing, photos like this one are taken with the phone and would look a lot better than on the camera. Video as well, especially in dark. You may wonder how is this possible? Well, that's the power of AI combined with software that today's smartphone have. Here are two photo samples. Let's play this game. Tell me in the comments which one do you prefer, number one or number two? Look closely, take a look at the details. Sharpness, contrast, color saturation. Which one is better? Some video samples and it's gonna be side by side with another flagship. So which one do you like more, number one? Or number two, comment below, let me know. I also obviously compared the camera against my older daily driver, the OnePlus 8 Pro, while I'm still waiting to get my hands on the OnePlus 9 Pro. In bright conditions, differences are hard to notice, that was a kind of expected, although thanks to the larger image sensor in the Mi 11 Ultra, we can see nicer natural bokeh with portraits. Always the natural shallow depth of field is much better. Not that it is entirely optical here, of course, with the portraits there will be some softer processing in post, but it tends to look quite natural. In some of my previous reviews of Mi devices, I've stated many times that in my opinion, the MIUI camera app is the best stock camera app, and you can check how many great functions it has, including the Pro Video mode, which I'm such a fan of, and this special all-camera mode available with the Mi 11 Ultra. There's even a log mode, which is recording videos in a special mode, which allows preserving more details in the highlights and the black areas, and allows a lot better color grading in post-production. I think the statement that Mi 11 Ultra is as good as some professional cameras already is true, and the OIS, the variety of cameras and the processing are mind-blowing. In a nutshell, main camera is based on the Samsung GN2 sensor, as we stated, the largest in the industry at this moment, 50 megapixels capacity, and it's something that Samsung have announced just a few weeks ago. So it will certainly be among the best of the year, and I'm sure that the camera will get further performance improvements in the coming weeks. The ultra-wide angle sensor is IMX586 by Sony, which is another flagship sensor. Bunch of 2020, some 2019 flagships used it as a primary sensor. So that well explains the phenomenal quality of the ultra-wide angle camera. And then we have a telephoto camera with a little darker optics, but again, it utilizes the IMX586 sensor and it's brilliant. Okay, enough about all these cameras and I think you've seen enough. So if you do have more questions or you do have some requests about what you want me to test in the future, then please make sure to comment below and also you can request any of the images that I've shown throughout this episode. Uh, I can provide to you the raw original file so that you can see them in depth because I know the YouTube compression is changing and taking away a lot of the quality. Now, going further, because this smartphone has a bunch of additional amazing qualities. It is waterproof as a starter. Dropping it inside water shouldn't be a problem. The build quality is amazing. All the cuts, especially the areas around the speakers, they look stunning. The most interesting characteristic is of course the rear display. It supports always on, you can use it as a way to always show the time, it can help with notification alerts and also preview selfies. Under the hood, we mentioned about the performance, we didn't really talk about the connectivity. It's, again, ultra good design. Duo 5G support, latest and greatest from the currently available mobile technologies. 5G in my country is just rolling out, so it was a good opportunity to make a test. Call performance is great, supports not only 5G of course, 
LTE 3G networks that are widely supported, great quality and a speaker that can be really loud. From the remaining hot topics, battery life is really decent, 5000 mAh in a flagship are not something to be underestimated, it will last for a day, maybe day and a half, sometimes even up to two days if you're performing some battery-friendly tweaks. The unique part is with the charging, there's a 67 watt fast charging technology deployed, it can get your battery from 0 to 100% within 36 minutes. And there also is the wireless charging, which is the greatest upgrade here, allowing the phone to get charged within about the same time. All of that thanks to a newly developed technology utilizing a 30-volt based integrated circuit. As for the software, the Xiaomi flavored MIUI skin with tons of customizations and useful features. In short, it's pure Android with the Xiaomi developed skin, a lot more tweaks than the stock Android and some minor modifications like button customization modes, easy password sharing, themes, security enhancements, display calibration and so on. The greatest news about MIUI is that it's getting regular software updates for quite a long time. You can count on it being supported for at least two or three years. Now, at the end, are there any things that I didn't quite like? In fact, there are a few. First of all, it's rather heavy. At 234 grams without a case, it's among the heaviest in its class. Apparently, this huge camera bump and the secondary display contribute to that, meaning that if you use the phone with a case, it's gonna feel really bulky. Secondly, switching between the cameras while zooming in or out is still quite obvious and there are notable color changes. I believe that in time Xiaomi may smoothen this, but right now, with the very first version of the software, you can well notice it. Also, the front camera is just very good, not ultra good. Looks like Xiaomi's main idea is to let people do more often selfies captured by the rear sensors and using the secondary display as a reference. So, selfie camera, audio quality. This is what we test in a very dynamic environment. You can see that here in the woods, with direct sunlight, it's really difficult for the exposure to get automatically adjusted. I think the front camera does pretty well. And you can tell me in the comments what you think about the sounds. So clearly the Mi 11 Ultra well justifies its name, starting with the fact that it has the largest ever image sensor placed inside a smartphone, which I guess contributes a lot to this amazing result that DxO Mark's testing has given to the Mi 11 Ultra. You know, it got the highest ranking ever. I'm really curious if, if it's going to stay untouched until the end of the year. It has one of the most efficient cooling technologies for a flagship. Obviously, there are some gaming smartphones with different implementations, but for a flagship, yeah, it, it really is among the best. Uh, we have one of the fastest wired charging technologies, one of the fastest, actually, it is the fastest wireless charging technology, an amazing sound tuned by Harman Kardon, and all these other amazing features that we talk about in the past few minutes. And I think at the end, there's only one big relevant question we can ask about the Mi 11 Ultra. It's about the price, because in Europe right now it costs 1200 euro. And I'm wondering, are you ready to give 1200 euro for such unprecedented flagship? Or you have another plan? Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. And also share your opinion about the camera and the rest of the features. And I would very much appreciate if you support the channel. Hit the like if you enjoyed this episode. You can subscribe for more tech inspections. My name is Michael. It's been such a pleasure to see you in these few minutes. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.